Okay, so today let's consider this like just a basic primer. But what I'm trying to do is kind of like jostle your brain a little bit. If you haven't thought about how we modify masks, I mean, creating a mask on a layer, if you know about it, then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, masks are pretty cool. You, you, you understand how good they are and how useful they are for so many things. But what a lot of people don't seem to do is take it to that next level of the way you can modify a mask, let alone create it, right? Uh, let me show you kind of what I mean. A lot of people don't realize these simple things. So for example, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create um, a hue and saturation layer. It does not really matter. This is a final image. I'm just gonna do a demonstration. Now let's see about creating a mask. For example, I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna turn it off for the moment. I'm gonna make sure I'm on black foreground, white background, it's just one of the many things we can do. I'm gonna put a gradient map up and then I'm gonna edit that gradient and I'm gonna take the white down to like, uh, you know what, let's go for shadows actually. Let's go for shadows because it's a little more obvious. So we're gonna flip it and we're gonna create, as you can see here, this is gonna be a mask of just the shadows, right? Cool, we hit that, we can see it. Option Command or Alt Control 2, we get that selection. We've talked about this in other videos, okay? And then now we can come to the hue and saturation, create a mask. I'm gonna leave the gradient map uh, just sitting there for the moment. As you can see, there it is. Now, if I change hue, then I'm only affecting the shadows, as you can see. All right, if I hit colorize, for example, I can colorize the shadows in any way I want. That is a luminosity mask. Pretty straightforward, but that's not where it ends. This is, this is the kind of thing, and it doesn't have to be a luminosity mask. This is the kind of thing that people don't often think about. I don't know exactly why. It's just maybe that's the way the training has been out there. I don't know. But look, you hold down Option or Alt, click your mask. At this point, you have raster data, pixels, that you can modify. Oh, sure, you probably know that you can take a black paintbrush or a white paintbrush and make manual adjustments. But look, you can hit Command L, which before we do that, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Come to Image, Adjustments, okay? Uh, some of these adjustments are not going to be available to you, obviously, because, you know, you can't do vibrant saturation color balance. You can't do these things on a, on a mask because it's only going to be black and white information and grays, right? But you can do brightness, contrast, levels, and curves, and some other things too, right? So let's go to Levels. Look at this. I can take the dark and move it in, and I can change the range. Now, granted, this is permanent, okay? But just, we don't think about this sort of thing. We can shift the midpoint around. We can minimize that. There you go. Now we go back to our regular and we, we have it on colorize. There we go. And we can kind of move it around, right? Things like that. People don't realize that you can take anything you can see and make it a mask. For example, let's say you go to a selective color. Now I have this preset here where it says satin mask C. That's a chroma satin mask. Okay. It sets it all up. We have videos on that and you can learn more about that in my tutorials. But this is a saturation mask. Okay, done with only chroma, so therefore we're not getting, you know, false positives with Luma data. So once again, Alt Control 2 or co Option Command 2, we get that selection. It's going to let us know that no more than 50% is available. That's okay. It's still there. And now if I go to like Vibrant, I'm going to increase the Vibrant of just the saturated areas from that to that. But again, we're not done, right? Let's go to our mask. You notice how it gave us that warning of 50% because the saturation levels weren't that high. So therefore you didn't get a whole, you know, you didn't get a really strong mask. But how do we make it a strong mask? You probably can guess. Command or control L. We can increase that intensity and we can minimize how it's bleeding. You see how it's brighter. It went from this to this. Now the saturated areas are going to be affected more. See? They're affected more. I can increase the uh, strength of the mask, right? Yes, yes, these are permanent changes. They are. But to get the information like I want only the saturated areas, but I want a little more of them, right? This is one way to do that. You can modify a mask after you make it. So, you know, there it is right there. Now, another thing that I've also done is on this all black start setup, right? So I can come in here and I can go to like neutrals and I can make them 100% white. There's my neutrals, right? Cool. Same key command, Option Command 2 or Alt Control 2. Now I've got the neutrals. I can use that selection to create another new channel. Uh, I don't know which one. How about... Yeah, well, hue and saturation again. Why not? We're going to colorize the mid-range. As you can see, we can make changes only to the mid-range. I'm not saying it's a good idea for the image, but there it is. And once again, you can probably guess, Alt or Option, click the mask, and you can increase the intensity, if you will, tightening up the range a little bit. 
And there you go. You can increase that intensity. And the opposite is also true. Don't forget. Yes, it's permanent and I shouldn't have done that, but you can decrease the intensity of the mask, which we can't see right now. One moment. You can do it without seeing it, just to be clear. Okay. And I do that actually with some regularity. We're actually changing the depth and intensity of that mid-range. There we go. Voila, voila. Okay. Changes like that. It's not the most obvious thing that people don't always realize. I don't know why. Uh, another quick thing is you go to select, select subject, however you do it, whether you go to the select menu or you have your little prompt window, uh, little bar. I close that. While that selection is running, you can create, let's turn off select, select the color. You can create a mask or rather a new adjustment layer and that selection turns into a subject mask and now we have just the subject and we can do anything we want just to the subject okay this kind of like mask modification in the way we can for example let's um let's do a let's do that again let's do our, our saturation mask again okay there it is we select it with the option command or alt control two. Now we have it selected. We're gonna put it on hue and saturation. We're gonna look at it. Another thing we can do while we're here is go to auto contrast. And that's gonna kind of maximize that mask. It's gonna take the whites to the brightest, the brightest white to the whitest, uh, and the darkest dark to the darkest. And of course, control command L and you can minimize those ranges as well. There's a saturation mask, cool. Now. I can uh, increase saturation there, but if I come over here and go to like to photo filter, I don't know why I'm going to add this orange tone to the saturated areas, hold down alt or option, drag this mask into the next. It might prompt you saying, Hey, do you want to replace the mask? I already told it, stop doing that. This kind of like mixing and matching of masks where you can modify the mask. You can copy the mask over. You can create the mask from selections. You can create the mask from nothing. Okay. Here it is. Just the image option command or alt control two. I am now selecting the luminosity of that image. And then I can go once again to like hue and saturation. And the mask is a black and white version of it. Why would you do that? I don't know. It could be cool. It could have some use. You never know. Right? So there it is. That's going to make the brighter areas more susceptible to what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. This kind of function alone, being able to whatever, being able to make a selection out of whatever you're seeing in front of you is an extremely powerful thing. Like with the gradient map earlier, so we can choose luminosity range. We can do the saturation mask. Like I said, being able to copy mask back and forth. Please don't forget as well. Let's just create some kind of mask and mix things around. I have these Luma mask presets here. So I'm going to go to the shadows lowest uh, shadows low. There we go. I'm going to select it, turn that off. I'm going to go to hue and saturation. I'm going to colorize it. I'm just doing anything. It does not matter. This is not relevant exactly to what I'm doing. There we go. Cool. And then I can take like a photo filter again and I can hold down alter option and drag it in here. But let's say for some reason, hold down alter option to click. I want to make it less range. So there you go. Now the photo filter is on the less range. Cool. I don't know why we want to do that, but we can. We can also take uh, those. Uh, excuse me. Let's take um. Let's leave those there. But let's create a a solid color layer. We're gonna make it red, and then we're gonna take a do, 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 hue and saturation layer for the moment. We're gonna group them. We're gonna make the red into soft light. And then we're going to come back, turn that off. We're going to turn on our gradient map. We're going to go back to the Luma selection. This is just one workflow you can do, right? So there's the highlights sweep. Okay, cool. Select them, turn that off, turn on everything else, go to that group and create a mask just on the group. So now hue and saturation, I can change the red if I want, which is a little silly because I have a red, um, but I can change the brightening, darkening, whatever. I can group. In other words, I can put a mask on a group. And guess what? If you hold down alter option, you can, can control that mask as well. Guys, it just goes on and on. I want to make it clear that masking isn't incidental. Masking isn't a way to simply show uh, a brightening um, of a brightening adjustment layer to brighten an eye. Okay. It's more than that. It can be so much more than that. And masks are just pixel raster information that you can change in all kinds of ways. This is why when you're selected on the mask, Okay, some of these functions are available. Okay, we have invert, obviously the most obvious one, brightness, contrast, levels, con you know, curves, auto tone, auto contrast, probably the most useful. So many things we can do. Don't forget, we can drag and drop. If you can see it, you can create luminosity 
uh, mask of it, or at least whatever the heck the mask is, you can create a mask no matter what. If you can see it, you can do it, whether it's saturation mask or one of these cool gradients or something like that. And go ahead, you know, I have these presets because I often use them. There's a time when I want blend if, and there's a time when I want a luminosity mask. And if I have it, if I can see it, I can create that selection. And you might've also seen, by the way, that if you go to channels and hold down command or control and click the RGB thumbnail, boop, that also selects the luminosity, that's cool. But honestly, I'm a key command guy. I prefer key commands, they're really fast. And honestly, option command or alt control two, it's just so convenient. There's so many different things you can do with mask, masking within a mask, which is a video we did recently um, about you know mask stacking. You can check that one out just a couple of days ago. I want to really expand your mind, make you think about like how, how you can use mask more than just like I said, curves, invert mask, brighten, and then now I brighten her eyes. That is absolutely useful, but cur I mean, excuse me, but masking is so much more and we are just scratching the surface, like I said. Yeah.